guard me from deep sin You gave me a new reason to live For that I give you all of me, Jesus If it wasn't for your love And if it wasn't for your grace I wouldn't be here Hello everyone, everyone, hallelujah, God is good, and you are tuned in to Youth on Fire with Rudy Lewis. This is my first time doing an hour show, one whole hour, and I, I thank God for each and every one of you. Let's have a word of prayer right now. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your wisdom your power, your love, and your joy right now. I thank you for your revelation, and I thank you for bringing healing to everyone that it may have been going through something or has been dealing with something that no one knows. And I thank you for being a God of restoration and fixing all our problems. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, so last week, if you haven't tuned in, we talked, we talked about the, the Beatitudes. I believe it was, and and the week before that it was talking about humility, and the week before that was about the fruits of the spirit, and uh, what dawned on me because I, I we've been in at my church at Worldwide Prophetic Kingdom Ministries we've been in conference uh, dealing with prayer for seven days, and it's been the most eye-opening experience that I've ever had in my life. And I, I thank God for everyone that has been there. And I hope that you have been blessed in that experience as I have. And I, I just want to tell you, it's always important that we get to a place where we are being spiritually fed. So we're not eating junk food, if you know what I'm saying. So, uh, lately, over time, I've been realizing a lot of people in my life that I've grown up with have made choices and put themselves in different positions. And some good, some bad, some ugly, some beautiful, and some successful and some unsuccessful. And what I've learned through all of it is they all went through a place and time where they have needed mercy. And I myself have been through that same place and position because everything in my life has not been squeaky clean. Hey, how you doing? Everything in my life has not been squeaky clean. It has not been always godly. It has not always been saved. But I do thank God for his grace and his mercy because if it wasn't for him still standing with me, even in my times of sin, I would not be here today and neither would you. None of us would. So I want you to think right now of a time and a place where you were at your lowest point. You were ready to give up. And I just want, I want to think, I want you to think of, because I know we all had this point and this moment in our life where we had an encounter with God. <laughs> think about what he had did that caused you to not give up, to not give in to fear, to not give in to resentment, to not give in to rejection, to not give in to your pain. I want you to really think about what it is God has done for you. And I'm going to give you a moment because it's important. And I need you to know because where we're going today, it's, you're going to need that moment. 
And if you want to, you could also type it. You're going through a lot right now, okay? I'm going to have a segment where we're going to pray for you, sweetheart. Now, um, let's tap into some scripture right now. Let's tap into some scripture. Uh, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16 says, Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Okay, so so for the ones that, that may still be in, in, in their sin, I, I've been there. I've been there. You, you got to be ready and willing to change. When you know enough is enough, when you're not happy with the sin you're in, it's time to come out. When you are now feeling convicted for what you do, it's time to come out of your sin. When you are now in pain because of the process of the things that you want done is not working for you, it's time to bring a change. When is enough enough? I asked this question last week. When is enough enough? I mean, we keep on going through this same process of sins. But when you get in God, he creates you as a new creature. And that is a new start. That moment and that time is a time for you not to look back, but always look forward. Always keep going. That's why I don't do the same things that I do. It's not hard for me to, to walk away from people that I used to deal with. And there's never no hard feelings because I, I love everybody with the same love that Jesus loved me with. So if they're still in my life, I'm going to deal with them, but it won't be the same way as it was when I was in my sin. For example, I grew up in a church. My father was not perfect. And, and, and what I learned from him was that you cannot be a man that takes personal understanding and personal wisdom and use it in, in God's house to God's people. You can't take personal thought and use it in godly counsel. So in everything that I do, I stay in the word. It's not easy, but this is the life that I chose, so I have to do what it takes. And if I don't, I'm selling myself short of the success that I could have in my life. This is one reason why a lot of saved folk are not as successful as they want to be. At some point in, in our lives, we have came to that place where we felt like this is not enough. We want more. But I'm encouraging you to do everything that you can to do better, to be different, to be what God has called you to be. And until you do that, don't get mad at, at the way that life is. You have to keep doing everything so when you have come across everything and you can't handle it, God said he will take your weight. What you can't handle, he will handle for you. He fights all our battles. But this same scripture, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16 says, we have to approach God, throne of grace, in confidence. And that means that we have to know that we believe that he's going to take care of the situation and the issue, and he's going to do it. We have to get out of God's way. Sometimes, like I said last week, in the process of healing, we get in God's shoes. We say we want this. We, we say we need this. But then we step in the way of our own process of healing. Then God is like, well, what can I do for you? Because you're doing everything that I was saying I was going to do for you. Everything you asked of me, I've been trying to do, but you, you won't let me do it. And God is not the person that's going to tell you that. He's just going to let you make the mistakes and make the decisions that you make. Now, this aspect of mercy is for those who are, who are longing for change. This aspect of mercy is for those who are in sin and don't know it. For the ones that, that may know, you know, yeah, this sin ain't good for me, but I'm in it and I'm comfortable. It's going to be a point in the day where you're going to get sick. Entire, whether it be your body, your mind, 
your spirit, or when you walk in church, you gonna have that day real soon. I promise you that. And when you do, hit me up so I can pray with you, and I can help you get where you need to go, because. God is looking for people that, young people that are sold out for him. Young people that don't care what other people say about them. Young people that will go the extra limb to prove that God is real. To prove that miracle signs and wonders still can and will happen. And they do happen. But it's by his mercy. And we have to understand that. Everybody has the opportunity and needs mercy. Even I need mercy today, being a youth pastor. I need as much mercy as I can get. I'm not saying that in a standpoint that I'm a sinner uh, and that I'm in sin. No, I'm saying that in the standpoint of when I make a mistake and yet I haven't realized I made a mistake. That you don't judge me because I made a mistake and don't know it yet. But that you will help me come to realization that it was a mistake. That's mercy. Where you won't turn your back on me, but you will help me get where I need to go. Sometimes harsh advice is not what's always needed. If you notice, when you give harsh advice to Christians or people that consider themselves as Christians, they turn their back on God. I'm just saying. And I've learned that from my prior experience, dealing with people off the streets. Dealing with people that's trying to do better. Dealing with people that wants to know God more. <laughs> but their situation won't allow them, so to speak. So let's go even deeper. Numbers chapter 6, verse 24 through 26 says, "Lord, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turns his face toward you and gives you peace. See, when people are talking against you, lean on God because he will give you the mercy that no one else will. He will give you the advice. He will give you the peace. It says it here. He will give you the change that you've always longed for. Don't look for it in people, they will let you down. That's not everybody. But I'm saying when you go looking for it, you won't find it. Because the devil is always waiting. He's always waiting for you to get out of your square and go searching for an answer that you can always have when you just seek God's face, when you find peace. It's important that you understand that. It's important that you know that. It's important that you hear this. Matthew chapter 9 verse 13 says, But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. See, he don't want nobody that's fixed. He wants somebody that, that knows that they are, are living a daily life where it could go left. Because you're going to be more dependent on him than you are on yourself. Think about it. If I feel like I got myself all together, do I need God? Would I need him? No, I wouldn't. Because I would have everything that I need to be successful. I would have everything that I need to live the life that I've always set out to do. But see, here's the thing. Jesus died for my sins. So I owe him my life. I owe him my love. I owe him my mind. I owe him my heart. I owe him my work. I owe him my mouth. Because everything that he has done for me has made me exempt to the judgment that I will receive for my mistakes, for my issues, for my flaws, for my bad habits, which I curse in Jesus' name. It's a daily fight. It's a daily fight that I'm living. You cannot assume that I am perfect because I am not. I am just like you, but I'm here to help others just like you, just on a different platform. Find your platform that you ought to help people in. Learn about it. Get 
active in it and allow God love to shine in you because that'll be that light that flickers so that people can see their way to their success. Sometimes you're going to find people that will never make it to church and you're the only Jesus that they'll ever get in life. You're the only Jesus that they'll ever get. You got to come to grips with that. Some people ain't going to make it to a church. So you got to be your best example. Just saying. God wants, he wants somebody that knows that they're not perfect. He wants somebody that knows that they're still working. He don't want you to be like, I got it all together. I know all this. I got this. No, you don't. Because the moment you think you got that, you ain't getting God. You might claim it. You might, you might say, oh, God, this, God, that. Let me show you how, you, how I know. Because we ain't talking no Bible. You talking all this hoopla. We ain't talking no scripture. We talking revelation and knowledge. But there's a scripture. And there's a passage that I'm going to bring to you. Matthew chapter 5. I believe it is. Let me see. I think it's Matthew chapter 5. No, it's not. Hold on. Hold on, people. Ah, thank God for wisdom. Yes. I thank God for revelation. Amen. It's Isaiah chapter. Ah. Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah chapter 55, people. Let's go there. And I'm going to give you the verse. Isaiah chapter 55. I'm pulling it up, people, so bear with me. Ah. It is mm, I, I, I'm so excited for what God is doing. It is verse verse eight. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. I'm going to let that stick with you for a minute. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. This is God speaking to us. Neither are my ways your ways. Declares the Lord. See, this is a problem that I, I've been coming to face for the last three months. We, we have so many hungry people out here. We have so many people that are looking for answers. And we have too little people, too, too little of a group of people that can give the word, give the knowledge, and they're not giving it. So you have what you call prophecy junkies and itchy ear people. That's always looking for what God is saying when he's not always trying to speak to you. Now, let me clarify this. Reason why I say this is because you can find what you need in the word. You jumping to hear all these prophecies. That's going left because that's not Bible. There's a time and a place for that, and it's called on the altar. See, I shut my spirit down. My spirit is not always open to receive a prophecy or a word. I'm being honest, and I'm a pastor. But when I'm open is when I'm in church, when I'm on the altar, just anybody cannot give me a word. No. And I ain't going to give a word to just anybody either. 
Why? Because I'm too busy focused on my word that God has given me. I'm too busy focused on the word, the role that God has given me. And if I stop and go looking for a word from somewhere else other than the place that God has given me, I'm going left field. That becomes my thoughts because I'm no longer looking in the Bible for the word. I'm looking from someone else's mouth. What God is saying. The, I hear God saying, I, I hear the Lord speaking. It's good. It's, it's good. But according to order. You have to understand that. It's important. It's very important. <laughs> That, that we get that. Now, let's take it even a step further. As the heavens, this is verse 9, Isaiah chapter 55, verse 9. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. See, this is a problem. We, so, we, think, we think so man to man that we forget. That God's word is farther than a word your next the, the word next person next to you can give you ever. 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 It's right here. It's in the Bible. It tells you everything. Stop going to people asking for a word and being hungry. A prophecy junkie. And leaders. And other elected leaders and people, stop giving words. Just because you feel it in your spirit does not mean it's right. And it could be right. It could be right. But you have to know the time. You have to know the place. See, I I'm going to say this. The Holy Spirit will not jump on you. Now this is now this is going to be controversial, but I want to spark your interest, and I want you to read the Bible for yourself. The Holy Spirit will not jump on you unless you allow it to. Why? Because you are in control of your own spirit. The Bible talks about that famous story where there were leaders that came together. Let me share something with you. When they came together, they had a mindset. They were in the same spirit. The Holy Ghost dropped on them. Why? Because they were open and available for that wisdom to come in. Their spirit allowed it to happen. But I'm not always like that. And neither were they. Because if that was the case, it would have happened to them long before it did when they were grown and they were in, in a meeting together as leaders. This is the Bible. I want y'all to find a story and look it up for yourself. I'm just sparking interest here because <coughs> it's too many Christians that I've came across in the last three months in that area. They don't want to extend mercy. They don't want to extend grace. And they forget that they are just as human as they are. The same people that they're looking at. My question is, how does it feel being judged? How does it feel being looked at as if all your mistakes were big, stupid mistakes? It doesn't feel good. So don't do it to anybody you love. I say that because the Bible says we are to love everyone with the love of Jesus Christ. I'm not saying you're supposed to do it right then and there, but it's a work, it's a work and walk in progress. And if you're not working on it, that means you ain't loving. And I'm going to ask you this. If you're not loving, do you love yourself? Do you love yourself? Do you trust yourself enough to love another man or woman in your life? And if your answer is no, you need to schedule a deliverance with your nearest pastor or overseer. I want to take a break here, and I, I want to play uh, some music in between in this moment. And I just want to, to allow your spirit to think about some of the things that I said. And for those who are joining on on the various 
outlets, I will revisit some of the things that I talked about. So you, um, it doesn't matter. It's up to you. All right. What you know about being sold out for Christ? What you know about being sold out? Yeah. What you know about being sold out for Christ? What you know about being sold out? God save me. Remake me, oh, he paid the way for me, yeah, just to show me I am I'm free, man. he made me, yeah, boldly, aggressive, I could have been dead and gone, but, no. but instead he kept me, oh, I could have been a thug, a thug. Could have been hustling and selling drugs. I could have been gang banging, but no. I'm out here selling out for Christ. I'm sold out. But my God up above, I'm sold out. I'll do anything for Him. He gave me life with nothing less. I'm blessed. And I know I'm a miracle. Oh, this is all I live for. Your problems. All your problems, and he wants your pain. Your pain. He wants the stress. All your stress. So go ahead, give it to a man. Oh, oh, oh. Don't surrender. I can't tell you he'll change oh, your life. Oh, oh. Go ahead, surrender. Oh, oh, oh. He'll make everything alright. Oh, he turn rivers to an ocean. Oh, he turned deserts to mountains. mountains. He turned lives to heaven. Goodness. So what do you think you do for you? Oh, I'm so out, oh, but my God up above. I'm so out, I'll do anything for Him. He gave me life and nothing less. I'm blessed, and I know I'm a miracle. Oh, this is all I live for. This the moment of life I would do anything when it comes to that old price Yo, Lord, you're worthy Of all the praise You're worthy Of all the honor Lord, I love you Forever So out, oh my God, up above, I'm so out. I'll do anything for Him. He gave me life, and nothing less. I'm blessed, and I know I'm a miracle. Oh, this is all I live for. Oh, this the moment of life. I would do anything when it comes to that old Christ, yo. All right, how's everyone doing? How's everyone doing? We're we're back. We are back. So I I I was just briefly stating to the guys that um are on live stream on Facebook that there's going to be a consecration, a wave of a consecration that is coming your way, and there's going to be a healing and an anointing 
that God is going to bring revelation through natural healing. And and what I realized, a part of what we're missing, Juan, in our churches is that when it comes to miracles, there are actions that we have to take and partake in. And we just think that God is just going to stop. Now, sometimes I'm not going to say and I'm not going to knock the fact that God can come in and move and be like, look, um, I'm about to just clean house and I'm going to take care of the issue altogether. And other times, we have to partake in fast. We have to partake in reading the Bible. We have to partake in reading the Word. Sometimes it's just like that. And I think that we miss we miss the fact that in healing, we have to keep a certain process going so that the healing can be active. See, God does the part that we don't understand. But the parts that we have to do is keeping up with that healing and getting our bodies ready to withstand the healing that is coming. It's just like if we want miracles and signs to happen by way of our vessel, by meaning we're speaking it that the way that God says to speak it and it happens. Your body has to literally go through a shift of diet. Your mind has to go through a shift of of intake of the world. You have to stop and detune certain things out of your life. So that God can begin to do his heavenly work by way of experiences, meaning dreams and visions. It has to happen in order for dreams, visions to come true. And then, (laughs) excuse me, and then even miracle signs and wonders to even be spoken out of your mouth. And it actually happens by way of their faith or not. You have to do certain things. You have to give up certain things because think about it like this. If I'm going to deliver somebody from a a spirit of addiction and I'm still dealing with the spirit of addiction, do you think God is going to heal them? Come on, just just by that. We don't have to be spiritual. Let's just think about that. Why would he heal somebody else that's dealing with something I'm dealing with and I didn't get a healing from it or a deliverance from it? God just don't work that way. The Bible says last time I checked, we have to be the first partakers of the fruit. So that means in everything that we do, we have to do it first in order for it to work on anybody else. You have to be doing it first. So if you want a move to happen in somebody's body, you need to be working on your body too. I'm being real because that's just the way that people in the world think. And I'm just being balanced. You know, everything ain't all spiritual because we're we're natural. We are, we are still natural. So we got to be real. We cannot ignore the fact that God operates in reality. And we got to get out of this, like, <laughs> cartoon mentality where things are just made up all the time. No. Things can happen. Don't get me wrong. Things can happen. You can go to your car and come back. I mean, you can get out of your car, go to the bank, and come back. And it could be a bag of money right by your car. I would love for that to happen to me in a, a, another day. But I'm just saying, you it can happen according to your faith and according to your walk. See, when you're on your road to success, God sends blessings your way to let you know that he's still there. Sometimes that could be a, hey, that could be a blessing. You never know. But supernatural things do happen to those who are supernaturally walking down their road of success. See, now, if you're not doing everything in your power to be successful the way that God has promised you, that's your fault. And I don't want you, I don't want you being on my show because you're not going to like any of the advice I will give you. Because I believe in reality and I believe in being honest and I believe in working I believe in sacrifice. I believe in doing my part so that God can do his part. God is always waiting on us. It's just like this. Okay, God is going to do something on Sunday at your church. Now, I'm speaking to you from my spirit. I just know God is going to do something for you when you go to church. 
You could take that as common sense. You could take that as a prophetic word. I really wouldn't care how you take that. But I just know that God is going to do something at your church on Sunday. Now, with that being said, if you miss church on Sunday, how do you know he did something great on Sunday? Riddle me that. Word of mouth? No, that don't count because you didn't show up. That's what I'm saying. God is going to do things with or without you. The question is, how bad do you want it? Will you miss it? Or will you sacrifice your time and go and get it every time? Now, before some of y'all join back on, I was talking about some of the issues that <laughs> we have in, in this new age of church. We have um, in the, the five-fold ministry, for those who know and for those who don't, that's basically being active. I'm not going to get too far into it, but that's where you're being active in ministry. That's We believe that everybody has a call and a role, a role that they have in life, and we believe that you will get there. By learning what we have learned and teaching and exercising what you're learning while you're learning it. See what I mean? So, for example, I believe that God called me to youth ministry. So, for a season, I wasn't doing anything. Then, after that season had came to an end... I began to get into the work. I began to start praying with young people. I began to start having classes with young people. But it wasn't no rush. It took me about a year and a half to even get to that point. It's a process. You cannot rush your process. There's so much that God has for us. It's important that we know what he's doing. We don't have to. Nah. What 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 God is doing? I'm sorry. What God is doing in our lives? It's important that we experience how to do it. It's like internship. I need you to get in your process a purpose. It's important that you begin to start learning about your future so that a year or three years from now, you're active and you are helping people. Because a lot of people are lost. And like I was saying before, we have a problem in today's generation. They're broken. They're looking, they're longing for answers in the midst of their sin. They're looking for compromising mercy. And that's something we Christians cannot give. You cannot give compromising mercy. What I mean by that is when you know somebody is in sin. That instead of telling them the truth. You say it's okay. Just use this to protect yourself. Hoping that they're going to come out one day. They can come to church after you help them. But that is not the right way to get them in, God, in God's house. You got to stand by the word. And that comes from the right teaching. So, like I said earlier, we have an ongoing issue of prophecy junkies. People that's always looking for a prophecy, always looking for a word. Last time I checked the word was the, the Bible. When was the last time you checked in that for your prophecy? Because there's only so many prophecies I can receive. Let me explain why. Because there's a prophecy to get me in alignment. There's a prophecy that will remind me of my role. There's a prophecy that will remind me of the blessings that is coming. And once I hear that, I'm the kind of person, 
I'm not hard-headed. So you only got to tell me one time. I hear that. I'm going in. I'm going in. I'm going in. Now, some and others, it could be different. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that. Now, I'm talking about these, the kind of people that are like, like, uh, even though they know what God is doing, they're always longing for a word from someone. They're quick to receive a word, but they're slow to go look for the word in the Bible. They're, they're slow to go study for themselves. Then you have ones that are in the word, and then they still looking left and right for a word. Or they find themselves in situations where people just keep on prophesying to them. Listen, you got to shut that spirit down. Let me explain why. Because when you got too many people talking to your spirit, it tags at you. And when people talk, they're planting seeds. And I don't want no seeds of discord, rejection, or other issues that I don't want to deal with in my life. Trying to stop me from reaching the goals that I've set out or the goals that God has set out for my life. So my spirit be shut down most of the time. I'm being real. Like, you might prophesy to me. That don't mean I'm going to be open and agree or I'm going to be open and receive it. Because I know when I need a word. And when I need a word, let me explain this to you. When you are in need of a word, you will find yourself on the altar. These are for Christians. Now, the ones that don't know God, that's a little different. When you are in need of a word, you need to find yourself on the altar. And God will fulfill that need. He always will. But you don't need to be out anywhere else longing for a word other than the house that you're getting the, the word of God from. That is important. I need you to know this. Now, the only reason why I would say otherwise is if the, the word that you're getting from is not supplying everything that you need, that's different. That's different. Because I know we have a lot of people in my ministry, in my church, that come from other ministries. The other ministries don't supply the experience or the kind of teaching that we, we give. So we have what we call watch care, where we're careful to speak into your life. But it's appointed. You see, it's important that there is order to the house. And when there is not, the enemy is stepping in. It's important that you know these things so that when you go places that people are not just speaking over your life and you have to have boldness, spiritual boldness. Because Isaiah, like I said before, Isaiah chapter 55 verse 8 and 9 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts. So, so, so before I finish, see, what people think is for you is not always what God is thinking for you. This is why I said you got to seek God for yourself. The best word to get is in the word. When you go to church in that sermon, hearing that sermon, that's the best word you can get. And to confirm it, it's supposed to be a prophecy. That is what's supposed to confirm. The prophecy is what's supposed to pull you into God. Or confirm what God has already said to you. Now, anytime it's some stuff that's just random, you got to be careful. You got to be careful. Because some prophecies don't come from God. It can come from my spirit to your spirit. And if I'm dealing with demons, my demons jumping on you if you accept it. I thank God I'm not. I'm just saying. So, so you got to know this. As it, as it goes, it says, neither are your ways my ways, declare the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are many ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. See? So you just got to know these things. These are important. These are tools to help you get successful. These are tools that will help you reach the higher heights. These are tools that will help you go to another place in life. And at this time, I'm going to take another break. Because I feel 
something coming. When we come back, we are going to deal with prayer for the ones that have been asking for prayer. And if you want prayer, I want you to comment down here. Comment on here. Comment. And let me know that you want prayer. And I will openly pray for you. I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. All right. For my answer so long, yeah I've been trying to do it all on my own, yeah I've been trying to search hard in my own songs, yeah But I ain't looked up, I ain't looked up To the high in the sky I ain't called God for an answer And I don't know why I don't know why, but he came to me today, and he already said, keep my mind focused on high, on high, and he is me. You've been running, you've been hiding, you've been asking why, you've been looking for the answers, but you ain't looking up in the sky. You've been lying to yourself like, I got it, I can handle that, but you know what, this God said, he can take it, just give him the stress, just give him the pain, just give him the cry, just give him the hurt. Don't ask why He can take you and make you over He can make all situations go over May you Change you He the man to Go to Change me We're back. We're back. We are back. 
And I'm ready to start praying. So I want you guys to tune in. Let me see. Let's get some prayer requests going. If you have any prayer requests, I want you guys to comment right here. I want you guys to comment. Please do. Because I, I think it's important that we start tapping in. Okay, so uh, Aaliyah, she wants me to pray for her and to keep God, her godmother, alive from cancer. Okay. All right. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for her life right now. I thank you for bringing healing right now. I thank you for touching her heart right now. I thank you for miracles, signs, and wonders happening in her life that you will begin to show yourself in her dreams right here, right now, that tonight would even be a night of change, that I will hear a praise report, a testimony, that God, you are doing something new. I thank you for your miracles up brewing. I thank you for your signs up brewing. I thank you for your wonders up brewing. I thank you for bringing mercy right now to her household, that whatever it may be, that she may be even fighting against that it ceased to exist. I thank you for touching her godmother right now. I thank you for healing her godmother right now. I thank you for eradicating the spirit of cancer. You have no legal right in their life right here, right now. We curse you. We uproot you in the blood of Jesus. I speak healing. I speak change. I speak prosperity. I speak new life and new health. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. All right. Wow. Anybody else? Do you have any prayer requests? I got it. We got a little bit of time here. And I, I, want to, I want to pray with you guys. We have a little bit of time here. I want to pray with you guys. It is important that you come to a place in your life where you are, are seeking for prayer. Not for a word, but for prayer. It's always okay to have prayer in your life. Always. That's important that we have that. Wow. So for those who have just joined, I have been talking about mercy. And how it's important to have mercy. And and how we we need it in this day, in this time, in this generation. People are longing for answers. It's time for us to get in, in a church. That will allow us to operate in our gifts. Amen. Okay. All right. You know what? Our church address, Aaliyah, is, is in Lincoln Park. It's 1911 Horger. I'm going to send you the information. And I want you to come. I, w I want you to come to our service. We have youth service next month. I mean, I know you might have something going on Easter, but I want you to come next fourth Sunday. I'm going to be in touch. Amen. Amen. But as I was saying, we are in a, in a, in a pivotal day where the young people are either going really left or going really right, all for God, sold out, or they're just going totally left. They're going away from their dreams, away from the purpose that God has set out. And and I, I noticed that it's a lot of young people that know God, but they're not getting the correct substance. You know, we're talking off of our own thoughts and revelation. But God said to talk off of his word in Isaiah chapter 55. Verse 8 through through 12, no, through, through 11, he tells us that we are not the ones with the right answers, but it's him. So we are to seek his word to find what we need, not one another. And so it's important that we find the word we're looking for. The Bible says, seek and ye shall find. That's that's Bible. We have to go looking. 
See, it's always good to have, you know, people on social media telling you about the word and this and that. But it has to come a time and a place and a day where you're seeking him for yourself. It just got to be like that. And until then, you, you're you questionably in a, in a position where you're, you're looked at, from my view, that you're not getting everything that you need to be a successful man and woman of God. And I'm here to bring truth. It might not feel good. Some people might be messaging me after this conversation that I'm having here. But where's the word in your life? Where's the word? Because we need that. We don't, I, I mean, I, I, having good conversation, that for me, it only goes so far. Because I'm a man of substance. I might not speak it to you when I first meet you. Because I'm feeling where you are. So I know what to bring to the table when God says to. So that I can be productive in the friendship that I have with you. It's important that as a brother to you. That I help you. So you can help me. See because if I come on your level. Or if I come on a level that is below. Both of our understanding. It will be detrimental to the relationship that we could have. As, as Christians with one another. So if I'm going to come in your life, I have to come with a whole nother level of aspect. And people ask me all the time to do certain things. I just don't do it. I'm laid back until the time comes for me to open up. You know, and that's in everything. My friendships, my relationships, my, my family ships, where I have, you know, cousins and stuff like that. I don't open up. I listen. For a while. And then when God tells me, he releases me in my spirit, <coughs> it's all word. Because that's all I do. I don't sit around and talk. I talk about the word. I study with people. Find study partners. Find people that will better your relationship. You have to find that circle of wise people so they will not allow you to go lower than where they have been. I have a circle of wise men. I call them a circle of wise men. Where I have men that are of all, of all ages and, and of all different aspects of ministry that will not allow me to fail in their way. Each one has failed in something. But they're empowering me to supersede where they have failed. And I will not be the mistake that they were at the age that I am. You can't fail when you have a team of people supporting you. So as we conclude this session, as we conclude this session, I want you to think of some of these things that I've stated to you and even go watch the first segment of what I was talking about so you can really get a full perspective of what has been said because I, I did just reiterate and I pray that God bless you. He keeps you. Until next time, I'm Youth Pastor Rudy Lewis. You have tuned in to Youth on Fire. God bless. You saved me from bondage. You brought me from deep sin. You gave me a to live for that i give you all of me jesus if it wasn't for your love and if it wasn't for your grace i wouldn't be here i'll never leave you i want more lord i want Okay.
give it to him. Yeah. I'll never leave you. I'll 